myself. Um, judges didn't necessarily felt like it read that way. They said I looked a little uncomfortable, but you know, I, I felt good. Like I, I still like watching it back. I was like, you know, like after I got eliminated, I was like, I feel like I need to watch it back and understand what they're talking about. But then when I watched it back, I was like, no. Still I feel no like when you walked out, you really embodied that that old Hollywood glamour that I feel like you you really do enjoy embodying in your in your drag. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering, like, who inspired you to sort of embody that? Yeah, well, I just love. There's something about a, like a strong, confident woman, you know, who really like a, any strong, confident woman, you know. And I, I take a lot of like inspiration from my mom. She she raised me and my three brothers by herself. Like that takes strength, and you know, she she just women just inspire me like they're just so amazing and I feel like we, all women should be confident no matter like their body shape or you know anything like that like they just need to like I just love something about a, a confident woman walking out there and and that's what I try to embody with my drag as much as possible you know just oh yeah I just love and it. I feel like the, the the lip sync was with the confident women uh woman of the 2000s you had Nelly Furtado's man eater um, which is still on my Apple Music and I listen to it all the time, all the time whenever I'm running. Um, what did you feel when that song came on? You're obviously lip syncing against a queen that you know, a queen from Vancouver. So walk me through what's going through your head right before that happens. Do you want to hear a spooky story? Yes, I do actually. Okay, I think I'm wait, a witch. Hold on, wait, I'll just, I'll, I'll make it theme. Okay, perfect. perfect. So I think I'm a witch. So oh. literally two weeks before leaving for the show. You know, we all hear rumors about who's going to be there. Like mm -hmm. who might be there and you know, Gia's name popped around like here and there and I was just like eh, we'll see like I don't know I'm not gonna read into it too much because the rumors are always wrong you know no one was guessing me at the time so um I uh then I was sitting at work one day and Maneater came on in the salon and I was like I turned to my coworker and I fully said I said watch me have to lip sync this against Gia <gasps> we weren't like I'm not I can't make that I like, believe it I, I have someone who could vouch for that story. And I, as soon as I walked in and we got our, the, the song for the lip sync, I was like, is this going to happen? <laughs> what an iconic um, song. That's so funny. I just like, right? you know, a woman's intuition, you know? Yeah, literally. Um, but it was just so, you know, I, I, I love that song. It's not necessarily my style of performance necessarily. Um, it's an amazing song. And, you know, I love Nelly, but, you know, I did what, what would I, your I did ideal what song I, have been then? Uh, like your dream song to have lip synced, if you could have. You know, you know what the song that I could kill, and I love performing is "Show Me Love" by Robin S. Like it's oh. honestly my my go to song, or anything by Lizzo, like "Because uh, I Love You." Um, like I love performing stuff like that where I can just really, just like present the emotion of the song, you know. And I feel like that that takes sometimes. Like, I feel like I could be more exhausted after a ballad than after, like, dancing around stage. <laughs> it's more about the emotion for you and yeah. really expressing that. Um, and in terms of expressing, what were you looking to express on the mirror when you kind of, like, just smudged? I thought that was so interesting. You just were like, mm, I'm just going to stand here for five minutes and smudge. Well, it's because I had nothing nice to say to any of them. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I just, I wanted, I wanted something to be memorable. I'm like, well, like, what are people going to remember when I leave? Like... I'm not just going to go, bye, I love you. Like, they know I love them. They know yeah. I think they're amazing. They know I think they're all talented. And I believe in all of them. They, they know that. So, like, I got nothing else to say. So, you know, just wanted to give, give Gia some, or uh, make, make it a little harder for her <laughs> to clean up. I love that. Yeah. Um, now, uh, in terms of what you have going on next, I know you're going to be at DragCon in LA next May, which is very exciting. So what should people know? What should they expect uh, for you heading to DragCon? Um, you know, that's all still in the works right now, but I am so excited. This will be my first time traveling internationally. I've never left Canada, so I'm really excited to, uh, you know, ex meet all the fans and I'll have a booth there. I'll have lots of merch for sure. And I want to meet everyone. And you know, I want us all to have the best time ever. <laughs> I love that. I will. Yeah. I hope you have the best time leaving Canada for the first time. You know, America's not ready for Beth. And if anybody watching this live and they want to keep following you, they can follow you on this Instagram account you have right now. Um, and also everyone can tune into Canada's Drag Race every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Crave Canada. It's going to be an amazing season. Beth, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you have a really busy media day, so I'm going to let you go. Um, I really enjoyed speaking with you and we all love you. 
Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Beth. Bye.